we get started with the issue at hand today, I'd like to take a moment to express my condolences to those impacted by this weekend's severe weather. Our neighbors in St. Charles and Edwardsville, Illinois, across the river were hit especially hard. I'm proud of our city's fire department and emergency management agency for joining search and rescue efforts this weekend at the collapsed Amazon warehouse. Our emergency management team did a great job on Friday, keeping residents informed and prepared despite the enormous pressure. While our city was spared most of the damage, we lost two St. Louisans in the tragedy. DeAndre Morrow and Etheria Hebb. Our city praised for our city prays for their loved ones and their communities. Losing family is always hard, but it's even more difficult heading into the holiday season. And I'd like to take a moment of silence for the lives we've lost. Thank you. Now, I'm honored to be signing an important bill today that repeals outdated and discriminatory codes. 82% of St. Louisans supported medical marijuana legislation in the 2018 referendum. Last year, Missouri collected $132 million in tax revenue from medical marijuana dispensaries. More than 18 states, including our next door neighbor, Illinois, have fully legalized marijuana. Many others have removed penalties for carrying small amounts similar to what we're trying to do here today. We're seeing a major shift in the way our country sees not just marijuana, but how it connects to public safety, incarceration, and economic opportunity. I'll be blunt and excuse that one pun Locking up people in jail for low-level, nonviolent offenses does not make us safer. It simply brings more people in contact with our incarceration system, which in turn makes it more likely for them to, re to reoffend in the future. At the same time, enforcing stringent marijuana laws diverts our police resources from addressing the most violent crime. <clears throat> Meanwhile, billionaires make bank selling marijuana Millionaires make bank selling marijuana while communities of color face the full burden of outdated marijuana laws. In the past three years, 82% of individuals arrested in St. Louis for marijuana-related offenses were black. When we talk about racial justice and equity, it's these kind of changes that will make a huge impact. So as our attitudes around marijuana change, as we look to reimagine public safety in our city, I'm working to make sure that our city laws reflect this new thinking. Board Bill 132 repeals outdated mar marijuana laws, stops marijuana from being used as a sole probable cause for search and arrest, and authorizes criti critical changes to city personnel drug policies. This law will reduce racial disparity disparities in our policing, make our city safer, and make St. Louis more competitive in hiring for city positions. It will also help harmonize our city's policies with language in the state constitution. I want to thank Alderman Brett Ryan for being such a fantastic partner on this legislation. My administration appreciates his expertise and his hard work in helping pass this unanimously at the Board of Aldermen. I also want to thank all of the co-sponsors of this legislation who worked to bring it across the finish line. My administration looks forward to continuing to work with the Board of Aldermen around critical public safety issues such as these. Thank you, and now I'd like to bring up Alderman Narayan to say a few words. Thank you. I'd, I'd like to start off by thanking my colleagues at the Board of Aldermen, as well as Mayor Jones, uh, for being so supportive of Board Bill 132. It's rare that we see so many people from so many different backgrounds come together to unite around a single cause, which is exactly what we've done here. 
This law represents the clear will of the people of St. Louis. It will allow for our law enforcement officials to use their resources on the most pressing issues in our region. It will help with labor shortages in city departments, and it will also help prevent our injured first responders from falling into the pitfalls of opioid addiction. <clears throat> Over the last several decades, we have seen a substantial shift in the way that the residents of the city of St. Louis perceive marijuana and the war on drugs. This law is the culmination of countless hours of work from countless individuals. I'd like to acknowledge those individuals, as well as everyone who is still incarcerated as a result of marijuana charges. In my discussions with many residents of the city, there were concerns that this law did not go far enough. I want to acknowledge those concerns and state clearly that I do not disagree with them. In our initial discussions on this bill, we did discuss expungement, licensing issues, and the history of prohibition of marijuana in the United States. However, after lengthy discussions with our legal department, we felt that this bill was as far as we could push at the local level. For any who remain apprehensive because this bill didn't get into issues like expungement, I'd encourage them to contact their state and federal legislators and share those concerns. Although locally we don't have the authority to change some of those issues, the state and the federal government do. Today, we are showing that it's possible to take legislative steps forward that only years ago, many would have thought impossible. I hope that this work and the fact that it passed through a legislature that represents so many diverse people unanimously, I hope that this sends a signal to Jefferson City and to Washington, D.C. that these changes are not impossible and in fact signify the will of the majority of Americans. This bill is a huge step in the right direction, but the work on this subject is far from done. I hope that we can continue to move forward as a city and as a legislative body to continue to push for legislation that makes the city of St. Louis a more equitable and safe place to live, work, and play. Thank you. Uh, good morning. One of the most important things that is important to realize today is that you see St. Louis City progressing. For many, many years, people have said that we're the last state to get things. We're the last state to make changes. We're the last for many, many things. We have one of the first African-American female mayors, the first, in the entire city's history. Now, St. Louis has a long history of racism, disparate decision-making through leadership, and separatism. What you're seeing now is that pendulum swift, that, that pendulum shift, I'm sorry, that we all have been looking towards, looking for throughout history, wondering when our city will make changes where we all are making equitable changes for the entire city of St. Louis. We all are at some point now, some point in time, working together as a board, working together with the mayor's office to make great changes that changes the infrastructure of how this city is looked at. We're talking about criminal justice reform, but people only get into the criminal justice system during a stop by the police officers or those that are ordained by the courts to bring them in upon charges. Today is incredible because for hundreds, what, for hundreds, for enough years, our people have been subject to getting pulled over just by a smell of marijuana. Just for someone saying, we think that there's probable cause to look into your vehicle because of something that has been demonized by the system itself, just like we were demonized just 100, 150 years ago. We have people right now who have generations of families that have been locked up. Just because someone smells some marijuana in their vehicle, and of course there are other things that probably came with that, but I'm appreciative of us working together and being able to at least change the outlook and how personnel who work for the criminal justice system look at individuals, whom it is that they pull over, in the same light that they look at people in other cities that they are in other jurisdictions that they pull over. We know for sure, for sure, that racism exists in our city. I think that those, these are some of the things that have been utilized for some time to uh, really keep our city from progressing. So what this bill does is it stops 
individuals from being able to pull you over and say, hey, I smell something in your vehicle. Let me check the whole car out. It bridges that gap with the state and the city lines so we can all be on one balanced place. And really look at the importance of us moving once again the city forward. Uh, I'm in my community a lot and you'd be surprised how many people are trying to get jobs right now but have a felony record because they had a few ounces of weed in the car 10 years ago. I mean, 10 years ago. And now we're hearing the federal uh, government is saying, we're not gonna persecute you for a few ounces. You know, you can grow plants in your backyard, but 10 years ago, we will lock you up for it. These things are changing and we should not make, we, we should not ensure that we are not making the changes with it. And we should make sure that the people of the city of St. Louis can be represented by a government that is looking at what should change over time. You know, you used to grow up and you'd say, hey, if your children died at a pool, it's because somebody was smoking weed. We know that individuals are now giving their children CBD because it saves lives. Things are changing and we need to ensure that our city is changing at the same time. So I appreciate our innovative mayor. I appreciate having an innovative board. I appreciate us doing whatever it is that we can to work together to ensure that the city of St. Louis, the, the, the residential voices are being heard. When we all agree on something, we get 80% worth of votes on something, we need to move on that because all the time we're, we're at odds and it has been for years that our city is at odds. This is one of those times where we can raise our hands and say we are coming together and working towards being an equitable city and being equal in what it is that we all agree on and agree upon that should be a direction that we move in. So let's continue to move in that direction. No matter how many different disagreements that you heard, know that we can agree on things. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, good, uh, good, um, good morning. Uh, I want to commend the mayor for taking the criminal legal system in a new direction. Um, we have too many, too much of our city budget is being used for public safety, almost half of it and it's totally and it's ineffective, but it's taking money away from other departments, whether it be streets, forestry, parks, uh, water, uh, refuge, and other departments uh, cannot, for example, we have the parks department has one, um, per, one maintenance person for, the whole, for 110 parks, and uh, they only pay $30,000 a year to that one person, so that's, uh, shows you that we certainly need to redistribute our uh, money to prevention instead of uh, locking people up uh, for um, marijuana, which has been used uh, by people uh, for a long time. And also, we, uh, I'm, I must commend the mayor on um, uh, stopping us from criminalizing poverty. We have been uh, criminalizing poverty for more than fit for the last more than 50 years, and we see in the prison uh, industrial complex has been growing for the last 50 years. For example, uh, less more than 50 years ago, we only had two adult prisons for men. Now we have, I think, approximately 19. I think we have approximately. Uh, we had one for uh, women, now I think we have probably six or seven. So that shows you the ineffectiveness and billions and billions of dollars in lives are being destroyed. Uh, we have people, especially uh, black people, they're in jail right now away from their families and poor white people too, uh, but, uh, that are uh, in jail right now at uh, $30,000 a year. Over there in the uh, criminal legal system, the uh, jail over there, we spend $30,000 a year for prisoners, uh, whereas if we spent $15,000, we could prevent crime, because they only go there when we have a victim. And we know that the person who called the police got, that had them locked up is a victim. And we know that in most cases, the person who had to do a crime for pop because they're in poverty or using drugs also is a victim. And uh, we have these people over there exposed to COVID-19 who could be on the street who, and we would be safer while we are continually using police time uh, to lock those people up and using judges, 
and other prosecuting attorneys that we are paying salaries to to lock those people up who could be on the street while the automatic budget, we, I'm spending out of my budget almost a third of money for street humps and street bumps and other things that uh, could, the police could be in, and people are speeding in the neighborhood and dangerous speeders and being irresponsible while we're using the police to do things that could be uh, prevented, easily prevented, and we could have parents at home with their children and guardians, and we could have uh, be saving taxpayers' money, but we are wasting taxpayers' money on things that can be prevented, and we could be a safer city, we could be a healthier city if we used our parks and uh, emphasize health, we could be a more uh, be uh, beautiful city if we had our streets paid, our uh, grass, our forestry cutting grass proper, so we need to, uh, I commend the mayor for uh, moving in the direction of, uh, of, not, of decriminalizing poverty, and we need to have a war on poverty instead of a war on poor people. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Todd. Um, I'm sorry? Okay, one more. Good morning, everyone. My name is Father John Stratton. I'm the rector of Trinity Episcopal Church on the corner of Euclid and Washington. And this morning, I'm also representing Metropolitan Congregations United, an interfaith organization that is dedicated to breaking the school to prison pipeline. So it is great to be with you all this morning. So scripture tells us that, that God created pot. That's right. You can look it up for yourself. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verses 11 through 13 says that on the third day, God brought forth vegetation and created plants bearing seeds of every kind. And according to my professional interpretation, that includes marijuana. And God saw what God created, and God said, it is good. Now, before you uh, go around saying that Father John gave you permission to smoke marijuana, uh, just hear me out for a second. I'm not saying that, that God necessarily created pot so that we could all get high and unwind on Friday evening. I don't know if that was God's purpose, but I do know this. God did not create pot so that it could be used to criminalize our neighbors. God did not create pot so that it could be used to put black folks in prison. Jesus said that I have come to proclaim release to the captive, not to lock up brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers for low-level offenses that aren't even considered crimes in almost half of the country. God did not create pot so that you could fail a drug test and lose your job. God did not create pot so that it could be used to introduce our children to the criminal justice system or to be used to give authorities an excuse to harass black and brown bodies. That is not the reason. Those are things that we have done. Those are bad laws that we have created. We have used God's creation to criminalize, to demonize, and to stigmatize our neighbors. And that ain't right. That's not good. That is an abuse of God's creation. And that is an abuse of our community. This legislation, on the other hand, does a lot of good things. We've already heard some of them. It makes our city safer and more competitive. It harmonizes our laws with the state constitution. It makes it more efficient to fill important positions. But most importantly, or at least in my view, most importantly, this is a step towards a more beloved community right here in St. Louis. So no matter what you think about smoking marijuana, I think all of us can agree that this legislation does a whole lot of good things. Thank you, and God bless.